Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, Paolo. Thanks, uh, Carlos. How are you doing, Carlos? Good morning. Here, uh, I'm trying to put a little bit of joy here with the Christmas. Trying the to Christmas. forget this, <laughs> this horrible year. Of Don't our Santa. That's like a, yeah, that's a kind of a disco, uh, disco Christmas uh, place. Yeah, from disco. the 80s. From the yeah. 80s, yeah, from the 90s. That's why I put. That's why I put this jersey. 1994, Italy 1994. Ah. That's a pretty uh, uh, hurtful. Uh, painful. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's painful. And I, that's like uh, how my teenager who started, you know, and he started with uh, Baresi missing a penalty together with Roberto Baggio. Oh, that was terrible. I don't even want to go there anymore. <laughs> I think for our generation, it's really the first World Cup we remember, right? As, that we can remember actually, probably. To me, to me, maybe I don't know if I have a better memory or I'm a bit older, but I don't think so. But to me, the first one was the 1990, the one that we played uh, uh, home, no? the one uh, in Italy. Yeah, that was, another okay, one. Then. Maybe not, not, not the, as clear as the one in the 1994, for sure. But I do remember also the Donadoni and Serena missed penalties. Yeah, it was no, one of the yeah. first time that I cursed and I <laughs> remember that as it was yesterday. It was in Napoli, right? Yes, yeah, so that was in Napoli against Argentina. It, it was in San Paolo, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, Diego Romano Maradona the, Stadium, sorry. Yes. Uh, <laughs> famous, uh, famous or infamous, uh, it, uh, it depends, uh, scene at the beginning of, uh, of the match. I don't know if you remember. When uh, there was the Skidiaz. national anthem of Argentina. The national anthem of Argentina was played and uh, all the San Paolo was just uh, whistling. Uh, oh, that's, uh, uh, that's Olympic Stadium. That's the final. Oh, that was the Olympic Stadium. Yeah, that's oh, okay. when, uh, right. when Maradona said he hold the puta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's Olympic you see, Stadium. I was too young and I don't remember correctly. No, uh, <laughs> San Paolo yeah. would never do that. No, actually, uh, we had like this, uh, I remember this kind of banner, huge banner, uh, in which we are saying to Maradona, hey, we love you, but we are still Italian uh, and we will be supporting Italy. Uh, that's what happened. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, how can you make play like uh, Argentina, Italy in uh, Sao Paulo? That's so silly. It's of course Argentina is going to win. I, I think I think that's something that you arranged earlier in uh, in the stages. Yeah, yeah. You, I do, I, you I on that. that. It was just by chance that uh, by chance. Italy, Italy, Argentina was there. Or maybe so, they did it on yeah. purpose. I did. They knew. Maybe they did on purpose, uh, but uh, to make uh, you know to, to to place basically uh, uh, Napolitans against Maradona, but I don't think so. Uh, I don't want to think. No, so. no, no, no. I don't think so. No. At least uh, in the recent uh, editions of the World Cup, uh -huh. what I recall, the stadiums are decided uh, in advance, so in advance, you already yes. know where the final and the semi-final are, the semi -final are played. Yeah. But yeah, so Carlos, thanks for the memory. <laughs> really no, honestly, Thank you for bringing up this uh, really cheerful <laughs> moment. <laughs> for me, this is this is a tribute. I I I, I really don't know why, but my my father got me this jersey. It's the first football jersey I had in my life. I was nine years old, and obviously I don't remember 1990 that well. And the old World Cups like now that we've been talking about uh, Paolo Rossi and all that. Uh, I'm only watching videos on YouTube, but for me, this was, I think, by far the best Italian national team in 1994. Yeah. Even though they, they didn't win the World Cup, because this happens, it happens with the yeah. Netherlands. But for me, this was the best, the best national team that, that ever I've ever seen from Italy. So, so I if you guys agree on that. Uh, I don't. Uh, I like more 2006 <laughs> when we watch what you want. <laughs> but uh, let's underline that uh, uh, your national team is not Italy, but your Spanish supporter. Let's underline that because. Uh, uh, yeah. you know, maybe... Actually, and if you let me a, a, a personal anecdote about the national team, because you know La Furia Roja for so many La years. La Furia Roja, yeah. But my mom, as you know, is from Poland and my dad is Spanish. So yeah. I, I was raised in both languages, etc., etc. And every summer since I was a child, I spent three full months in, in Poland. So that's where I watched this uh, Roberto Baggio penalty. I was in Poland. But two years earlier in the Olympic Games in 1992, the final of the Olympic Games was Spain against Poland, the generation oh of my Guardiola, Kiko. Oh, well, yeah, that's a... And I was watching in a hotel at the beach in Poland, full, surrounded by Polish people, and me and my brother, 
everybody was asking, so who do you support? And I was thinking, no, I like both teams. That's what you always say. Yeah. You, you, met <laughs> you met them in the final. When you are in the final is when you have to choose sides. And then I remember in the extra time, they scored. It was 2-2. I don't know if you guys remember that game. And in the extra time, 3-2, Spain won the, the golden medal. And when I shouted and I almost got beat up by the whole hotel, then I realized, okay, I, I support Spain, you know? <laughs> okay. so, a revealing right. moment, huh? That's yeah. a nice, well, but, that's a nice one. That's a nice that one. It was incredible. And most of those players are the ones who laid their own play in 1994, the famous incident with uh, Luis Enrique and Tassotti. And th those are the generation that started there in, in 1992 with, which was funny also, Guardiola now that there's been all these political issues that he was Catalonia as a national team. When you see the images of him playing for the Spanish national team and how, how excited he was and everything, it's, it's quite uh, shocking. They keep, on, they keep on reminding to Guardiola nowadays those moments that. back then. No. He was young, he was not understanding how the world yeah. was working and, yet. And, and the final was in Camp Nou in 92. You imagine now the national team playing in Camp Nou after all the political uh, riots in the street. Now oh, it's that would completely, be. completely impossible. But back then, imagine Guardiola uh, playing for the national yeah. team in Camp Nou. That was shocking, shocking. Yeah. Actually, this kind of dualism, uh, at least for uh, from my point of view, sometimes it's like uh, only at club level, no? When, uh, for example, like me, I support Juventus, but I'm from Pescara, and uh, when they clash together, it's really difficult to take sides, mm. to choose sides, because like to me, it's like uh, the wife and the mother. No, where do you, <laughs> where do you put your the <laughs> love you one? No? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, but you know, at national level, it's uh, really interesting. Like, uh, it's, yeah, it it's be, also I, maybe more difficult to to to, to, to take yeah, sides. To choose sides. I, I think it has to be. Obviously, I was born and raised in Spain, but then every summer, so one third of the year as a child, I spent it in Poland and the two thirds in Spain. So, and I really feel from both countries. Every time I go to Poland, I feel Polish and I speak the language fluently and my grandparents, etc. But I always say, when you say that you have two nationalities, you support two teams, you will find out which one you support when they face, when face they off clash in, together. A, in a final, <laughs> in the clash. And then you immediately, you'll feel which team is yours, you know, immediately. Yeah, nice so, stuff. Yeah, it was interesting. And now another, talking about the anecdotes and dualism, I don't know if you remember, in 1994, the coach of the national team was Javier Clemente. Clemente, and now, yeah. Yeah, and now he's the coach of the Euskadi national team, the, the País Vasco. And last week, they traveled to FIFA to ask yeah, permission. Actually, like, they want to be uh, a, a new national team, basically. They want to separate yeah. from Spain. Yeah, that I was reading that. I was like, whoa. Why not do only at that? football level. Yeah. yeah, but so they why have do you want to do that? I mean, they, they have the hopes because uh, of Kosovo and Gibraltar. Gibraltar was a big issue. So as you know now, when there is the draw, for mm -hmm. example, Spain cannot play against Gibraltar. The same way Serbia cannot play against Kosovo. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Euskadi, but imagine Javier Clemente, who was the national coach for like almost 20 years, now is asking to be a national team for the FIFA, Euskadi. And obviously they, they refused immediately, but uh, still it was a big thing. It's like, how this guy can, can go now for, I don't know, it's difficult to explain. That's but. An answer. but yeah, I mean, when it comes to football, I mean, I understand like all, you know, nationality, all this kind of stuff. But when it comes to football, can you like, I take as an example, uh, uh, Yugoslavia, for example. Can you imagine how strong Yugoslavia could be if uh, they were playing just football together? I'm just talking about football. I'm talking, how, taking how away everything else. Yeah. How strong they were, because they were. They, they were, were one of the be... most important national teams. Yeah. So, uh, so I can imagine for Spain it would be crazy to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, that side of football taken away from the national team. Uh, yeah, the ones they, they, they did experiment recently. They did it like if they would be split into those regional national teams regional. Yeah. to see to see what the team would look like, right? Or for example, the 2010 World World Cup that we won, the, the, that team without the Catalan and the Basque players. You know, you have uh, Xavi Hernandez, Xavi Alonso, who is Basque. So it's, it's difficult to split that. I, I don't see it. But obviously, it's something that happened before with Yugoslavia. My, as you know, talking about more personal anecdotes, my, my wife is from Serbia. And then uh, you have proud Serbians who nowadays would not be able probably to play for the Serbian national team, like Petja Mijatovic. Petja Mijatovic is born in Montenegro, in Podgorica. So, mm -hmm. And he always talked about us as a, as a Serbian. But nowadays, he would probably play from a different, different national team. So it's quite... It's quite complex when you're born in one country that doesn't exist anymore. So, this is, it's challenging. That's interesting that. Okay. By the way, 
By the way, our, our editor, Matteo Carnevale, who didn't join the podcast today, is about to publish my selection of 11 best Yugoslavian players who played in the Serie A. So it's going to be an interesting article to read. Uh, 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 yeah, I remember Looking the forward one. for this. Yeah, you wrote already the uh, top 11 uh, when it comes to Spanish player. Uh, yeah. it was, uh, let's see. Very controversial. Very controversial. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very good for her. And moving on, guys, moving on. Uh, Paolo, you're wearing yeah. a really... <coughs> I'm sorry. Winning I'm a nice jersey. jersey. <laughs> um, so, Juventus uh, finally uh, yeah. woke up. F- finally, it's uh, the real Juventus. Finally, it's the one that... It was fake before. Is a spec- yeah, yeah, it was like a, <laughs> a bad copy of it. No? Um, actually, it's the one that... Uh, everybody was expecting from the supporter side, but I think also uh, also from the opposite side, everybody were fearing to face for sooner or later. And uh, we finally got the right uh, mood and the right pace. Um, I have to say that, um, okay, and he showed us, not only with the numbers that he's bringing on, but he showed us on the pitch that uh, his presence is kind of uh, central. It's... Um, something uh, critical for the yeah. Juventus uh, plane. But for the first time, um, at least uh, for the matches that I watched this uh, this year, when uh, Ronaldo was substituted, uh, if I remember correctly, by uh, Chiesa, when he was replaced by Chiesa, uh, Juventus started to play a bit more independently. So mm-hmm. it was following something, some different uh, tactics. But this time there was a criterion behind that. There was some uh, some meaning behind that. So there was not just players doing uh, trying to do their own stuff or trying to play in, uh, to change the match somehow. So far, the absence of Ronaldo meant kind of anarchy in uh, in, the, in Juventus. But yesterday, for the first time, I see this kind of uh, maturation. Let's say something that uh, it's. Uh, an improvement, uh, a tactical improvement by by the players, and in general, the match was something that really satisfied me. Not only for the result, even if we were winning just two nil, for example, or one nil, the approach, the mentality showed yesterday was completely different from uh, other matches. Maybe we saw that only against Barcelona, uh, but I have to say that finally we see the same kind of approach also in the Serie A League. And I'm really happy about that, Not let alone the, the, the result. But the most important thing is that we really found out how to approach a match, even if it's a, a routine match. I, I'm really happy for that. Well, and of course, I we are like imagine. catching up. We're catching up. Uh, Matteo was really my favorite victim this morning i was really looking forward to <laughs> to tell him <laughs> to uh, we are catching up we are coming is but he... it, it took an excuse 48 <laughs> yeah. percent contribution uh, by cristiano ronaldo on uh, uh, the goals uh, by juventus so, so juventus scored yeah. 25 goals and cristiano ronaldo scored uh, 12 of them uh, plus yeah. he has a couple of assists uh, uh, surely is a central is uh, a core player do you miss him uh, carlos do you miss him? You're, uh, yeah, I, mean, yeah, yeah, like, uh, I think so. Irreplaceable, you know. It's uh, how can you replace that guy? Sometimes it's like because you know they talk about new generation. Or obviously, now there is a big thing going on that next year apparently it seems it seems that uh, Kylian Mbappe will join Real Madrid because he's finishing his contract and apparently he doesn't want to renew and blah blah blah. But you know there are there are players that it's it's uh, you see them two three times in the whole football history. So no, I don't see any player in the generations coming now that could replace Messi and Ronaldo, both of them, right? So obviously we are talking about we were talking about Maradona before because he, he passed away a few days ago. But I think these three players are <clears throat> like like you guys mentioned, it's not about what they do. Sometimes it's just the presence of them, you know, for, for the for the opponents, for the referees. Sometimes the the fear just from being there and the the referees respect them more, so that gives you an advantage. It, it, you gotta admit that this uh, gives an advantage because, because in the last seasons I I had some I remember going to Bernabeu and and some games I was getting very pissed with with Ronaldo and and sometimes he disappears but he just needs this little action this little moment of, of 
this little jump like yesterday with the, the headers. It's like little jump. Guy, yeah. Little jump. How this guy is jumping like still this? Up in the air. How does he do yeah, it? It's did. unbelievable. It's like how I think the, so he, much beat, power. he beat the record of the jump last last season. You remember who, against who? Yeah. Sandoria. 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 Yeah. How was that jump? I, I remember they were measuring the, the jump over two point thirty five. I think. Huh? Oh, two point thirty five. I can let's check it out. I'm we can, we can Google that, but yeah. it was more than two meters. And uh, uh, I think that if you go to Tardini Stadium right now, you can still see him flying around because NBA, because, NBA. It's like yeah, basketball. It's, really. <laughs> I, I, what it really uh, astonishes me is that he can stay up in the air for like uh, that a was while. The so like it was 2.56, guys, against Sandoria. 56. Yeah, 2.56. <laughs> so it was eight feet uh, uh, high. The hell. It's incredible. Yeah. He, he, he he tried tried interesting good. stuff. Yeah. For me, I always say that his, his strongest skill uh -huh. is, is the headers. It's unbelievable. And he does everything good. He plays with the left, with the right, free kicks, etc. But But the headers, I there is always uh, here a... Uh, a debate who's the best header in the history and some people here will say in Madrid they say Santillana some others they say Fernando Morientes but but I think Ronaldo overcomes Santillana and Morientes as a yeah, header yeah, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if you guys can think of any any better striker or header than I, I I remember John Terry I used to like John Terry also in the corners but like but like Ronaldo I think no one really no one well I do they provided us uh, the the way the paved us the way to the World Cup in 2006. Uh, I mentioned Marco Materazzi, and he was one of the uh, the best players in terms of uh, headers. Also during the the Serie A league, uh, he was being also a defender. He was really used to uh, to score a lot uh, with the headers on, on the corner kicks. But I mean, mm, it's not like the same. Uh, I would say the same uh, yeah. playground there. I mean, yeah, indeed. Because he was, he, Ronaldo is actually more continuous on that, and uh, I think he was also jumping higher. And it's and Matras is also taller than, uh, than Ronaldo. Yeah. But really, I cannot. Um, Oliver Bierhoff. Uh, Oliver Bierhoff is, uh, right. is the only uh, striker that I remember is like uh, when the the ball was you know there was a cross. It's like okay, if Bierhoff is there, it's gonna be a goal. It's the only one. But no, Cristiano Ronaldo is uh, because the yeah. difference between Bierhoff and Cristiano Ronaldo is that uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is is mighty, is impressive to watch when he is uh, going with the head, you know, to hit the ball with that is the way he does. Also, when he does like uh, you know acrobatic moves when he jumps, it's uh, different. Uh, Oliver Bierhoff, uh, absolutely great player, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> we are a little bit also, also the way. The way yeah. that uh, Birov was uh, was um, taking the header, he was more like anticipating the opponent. Yeah, yeah. he was more playing on that. But uh, on the elevation point of view, Ronaldo I think that uh, has no rivals at all. No, for, for that. I remember yeah. they, they were making an interview of him. I think a year or a couple of years ago, and they asked him, "What's what's your favorite goal that you have ever scored ever?" And I was very surprised by the answer because he said. I don't know if you guys remember with Manchester United, he scored against Roma in Champions League in the Olimpico with a header. Mm -hmm. And that was his favorite goal ever. And it was, I couldn't remember, I have to find it on YouTube. And then when I see, when you see, that, when you see that jump and everything, I think probably if they make the interview now, he will say his goal against Sampdoria as, as, about the beauty. But, but that one against Roma was brutal, brutal, brutal. brutal was it the, the game when they scored like seven goals or something like that? That I don't uh, let me check it uh, out. Uh, I think it was 2008, something like that, 2007, 2008. That's for sure. I remember something like that. And I do remember because Napoli was uh, uh, getting to Serie A. Uh, let's see, let's see. Yeah, they won. Uh, won to Serie A, so, uh, sorry, to, to Europe. Uh, no, no, he won his first Champions League, I think, that season with Manchester United. If I, if I, when he missed the penalty in the final and they won, I think that's the year. That's a... Uh, well, Roma had, I think, La Cassetti, Aquilani, Maxas were played, uh, uh, were played, uh, uh, but I can't, I need to search for it. Uh, we could, I will uh, no search for it and, and say, and see if it was actually the, the seven one, but I'm not sure it was the seven one, uh, uh, 
Or well, 70, actually. 70, 71. 70, 71, I don't yeah, recall. Yeah. I don't know if it was that match, but uh, they didn't play too many times, uh, one against each other. So mm -hmm. if it's a recent goal, it might be that one. Maybe it was the, f the first leg or the second leg, because it happened only, fortunately for Roma, only one of the two legs. Yeah. In, do, you, yeah, what, yeah. Do, you believe, do you believe in Pirlo, Paolo? Do you think he's, he's the man to get into the Champions League? I have mixed feelings, actually. I have mixed feelings, but he is actually an assortment. He's someone that is uh, a breakthrough uh, coach for uh, Serie A. It's the first experience. Uh, it, for sure, he has a lot of, um, I'll say, more, a lot of uh, experience uh, as a player. On the pitch also as a co-player, so they know very well him. Uh, I struggled at the beginning of the of the Serie League to understand what I is his approach, but the more games I watch and the more I understood how he wants to to play. And uh, let's say I'm still having mixed feelings because what I was not seeing was the the character of the let's say the yeah, the character of uh, of the players, but after yesterday match, if they keep on playing like that, or let's say if they keep approaching the matches like they did yesterday, I will say that uh, I can rely and I can trust him. Still, it's like uh, out of the uh, something out of the blue because it's not something that uh, we have seen uh, before. Uh, I mean, his style of uh, coaching and his uh, impact on the players. So it's really. Completely new. It's a blank piece of paper. So, indeed, I, I think it's a bit too early to say, okay, I like this. I want this. It's too, uh, too mature a little bit. But so far, I say yes and no. Let's see. I gotta, I, I'm shocked. I got to point out about the performance of, I think you're, you guys are going to think I'm crazy, but I think the best signing of Juventus in the last, in the last six, seven years. Is uh, Kulusevsky. What, what a player at such a young stage, a, such a young super age. Good. I think he's, he's way beyond, uh, for example, Bernardeschi or Chiesa in that position. is like he does everything, honestly. And, and at his age and for that price, for that transfer fee, it's shocking that I'm, I'm, always, I'm still surprised that half of Europe was not fighting for Kulusevsky because he's going he's gonna to mark an era, I think, in Juventus in the next, in the next decade. I, 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 the guy is amazing. 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 I unfortunately agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I really unfortunately agree with you. I think he's uh, think that... uh, the star coming. Uh, that's the. Uh, yeah. You, it, I'm going to say something really big. Sorry, La Paolo. I'm going to say something really big, uh, big. But when it comes I'm to. I'm used to that. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to Kuluzeski, uh, uh, it reminds me it, like players that uh, uh, then you remind like uh, Pavel Nedved, uh, uh, you know, like a, that big. It will become that big for Juventus. That's the feeling I have when I. No. Um, I think that Juventus, Juventus is actually um, aiming uh, to. So it's approaching the, um, the purchase of uh, players in that way, like uh, looking really in perspective, really into the future. Let's see, even if at the beginning was not so reliable, but also with the league, uh, for example, we did the same uh, kind of uh, approach, let's say. We approach, are really yeah. looking... Uh, yeah. <laughs> and with Kulusesi, I do completely agree, it's, uh, it's the same. And... Uh, I, that's one of the of the picks that I really like, and uh, even if it's not on a perfect shape, I would rather. It's also to see his. Uh, he has some similarities in his uh, uh, life life story, no? Because he's also originally from a Balkan country, and the parents moved to Sweden, so it's, it has some similarities with uh, Ibra, no? Some connection Ibra. with Ibra. Yeah, both yeah, Balkans yeah. and then born and, and playing for the Sweden national team. So, but fortunately, it's way more humble than the the, the farm. <laughs> let's, so see, let, <laughs> let, so let's see about that, indeed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Guys, uh, uh, today there are other matches which are which might be actually really nice to uh, to watch. Uh, Sassuolo, AC Milan could be a really nice match. Uh, Dandri is like Inter. Uh, 
probably easy stuff for Inter against Spezia. Then we have Atalanta Roma, which mm. I'm absolutely gonna watch. Uh, unfortunately, there is not Gomez uh, for Atalanta. And then finally, there is Lazio Napoli. We can avoid to talk about that. But let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 mean, no, no, no. What, what should I say about Napoli? Napoli. I can say that uh, uh, we are deserving to win against a couple of teams. We didn't make it. Uh, we need to score. If we don't score, we don't win. That's the only you, thing. You are. A- as I said last uh, last week, you're in a winning streak apart from uh, Inter. Mm. Uh, I said two weeks ago, actually, that. Mm. And uh, then you won like 4-0 or 4-1, I don't know. But uh, I guess the Inter was, of course, something really tough to, well, to do. Actually, it's something that was decided by an episode. So one episode, or, oh, that's nice. So you're really positive. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, I was trying to be say, diplomatic. Let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> let's be honest uh, Napoli didn't score. Let's start from there. We had like yeah. a three yeah. clear situations in which we need to score. You score there, we are fine. Uh, instead, uh, we make uh, uh, we made sure that Andanich could be uh, man of the match. So just the fact that uh, the goalkeeper is the man of the match to me is saying uh, something more. Uh, besides that, probably, uh, you know, there are like a couple of yellow cards that, that needs to be given uh, uh, to Skriniar and Brozovic. Uh, we should have been sent off uh, uh, earlier than actually uh, Insigne. Insigne, we don't know what he said uh, to the referee. Uh, he got the red card straight uh, and the penalty is clear penalty. So there is nothing to say about that. Uh, you know, uh, you have one chance, uh, you don't miss it. You have three, Napoli missed all of them. So from that point of view, it's like, okay, obviously when, uh, you know, it's like uh, uh, Inter players were hunting the men. There is like this audio, which is really annoying. It's really uh, anti-sportive of Barella uh, basically saying uh, 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 to stop him or just kick him, uh, referring to uh, Insigne. And this, you know, the, the stadium is empty. The player needs to understand that now you can hear everything. And the audio is really annoying to, uh, you know, when a national team player is basically says stop the player, just uh, hurt him and kick him. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not nice. It's a nice to hurt. But that's how they, they interplay the game. Uh, and that's Napoli, a bit of the Conte style, I would say. That that's what a little bit, yeah, they were aggressive. Applied to players. Yeah. But listen, if aggressiveness uh, brings you to the three points, uh, the way they, uh, they had the three points, uh, it doesn't matter that you're playing bad or not. Uh, uh, you know, you need to score. And if it's incredible score, that Napoli, it's incredible that Napoli lost that game. I mean, if they play 10 times yeah. that game, Napoli wins 9 of 9 out of 10. But because yeah, probably, yes. The chances were so clear, so clear. And, but they missed and, that. Uh, I mean, yeah. when Politano is shooting, uh, uh, is shooting like, you know, uh, mid-air, Obviously, Andanovic is going to uh, stop it because it's uh, really easy for a goalkeeper of that experience to stop that kind of ball. Uh, and uh, I don't want to talk about the rest, uh, but Napoli needs to uh, score actually, if you don't score. And today we don't even have a forward. We don't have strikers. We don't have Insigne. We don't have Merten. We don't have Aussie men. So it's going to be funny tonight. Petania. Again. Yeah, you have Petania, but uh, it's uh, different, you know, uh, it's different. I like him, I like yeah, him. The quality course. is not the same, the quality yeah, for sure but, is you know, not the same. You miss but... Insigne and Martens uh, uh, in the same match. Uh, but let's what's, see, your uh, about, what, what's your opinion about, since I asked Paolo about uh, people, what's your opinion about Gattuso as a coach? Do you think he's the man or, or is it just a temporary thing, transition moment? Or? Uh, listen, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, is really difficult when it comes to Napoli is to keep uh, uh, a coach longer than uh, uh, three years, basically. Uh, and I can tell you, when Sarri moved to Chelsea, uh, Napoli and Sarri should have done something more because uh, we missed the, the, the Serie A uh, championship in 2018. Uh, but I'm sure if Sarri stays, uh, we can aim that uh, the next year. Gattuso came and uh, he won uh, after, uh, I mean, he won like uh, Italy Cup in really weird condition because uh, COVID obviously uh, uh, paid, you know, played a, a lot of, uh, uh, in the game. Uh, I like him. I like him. I think sometimes he's, uh, uh, you know, using a wrong starting 11. Uh, I think uh, he should be a little bit more straight when it comes to uh, aggressiveness. He should have more to the player. Um, he's doing a, a good job. I mean, he's doing a good job. Uh, the team is a strong side. I think Napoli is a strong side. Uh, but something is missing. Something is missing. I don't know if it's uh, Gattuso. I don't know if it's the club. Something from Napoli is missing because... Uh, 
uh, you cannot miss uh, two games against the C Milan and against Inter with similar situations. So two teams uh, uh, winning, uh, playing really aggressive. Uh, Milan played a really good match against Napoli. In both matches, you get the red cards. And the fact that you get two red cards, which are unfair or fair, whatever, you get two red cards in the game. Uh, that's something that it's uh, to take into consideration. And uh, because twice is uh, against AC Milan, against Inter, uh, you get two red cards, one and one, a lot of yellow cards, and you don't score. You miss the goal in both games. So I don't know if he's the, the coach uh, or if he's uh, the squad, uh, but something there is missing. And uh, that's not missing, for example, in uh, Juventus as a club. Probably is missing uh, Pirlo as a coach because he doesn't have the experience uh, to be there yet. But when you have the club, you can get and you you know you can watch, you can gain your experience, you can arrive to be uh, a winning coach. So I don't know, oh, Carlos. So to answer, he won. He came. He won. Who cares? I don't care about I the rest. We won the cup against Juventus. That's fine. You know, you know, at this at this moment, I think it's it's time to be pragmatic. This is a guy very well. Doing this, it's it's Mourinho. When he goes to teams, for example, the I'm thinking about the first season of Mourinho in Manchester United, or or, or now in Tottenham, which is his second season, but in reality is his first full season. He always, because of the people are stressed and this is football and you need to win fast, he targets some cups and tournaments that maybe are not as big. So, for example, he won the Europa League with Manchester United on the first season. I think with Tottenham, that's his target. And I really think Napoli has a very good chance this this season, this year, too, in the Europa League. They are playing against the Spanish side, Granada, now, in the next round, which I think that was a big surprise. It's the first time Granada qualified for Europa League. So I think they should really focus in, in Europa League for many for many reasons. First reason is when you, if you win the Europa League, you are qualified for the league next season. That's big. And second, it's it's a European title. And, and after, I know you guys won the, 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 the cup last season, but... Always a European title gives gives excitement, and uh, it would be it's 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 more reachable for the, the level of Napoli nowadays than. Uh, I think it's a good opportunity yeah. to try to. Obviously, I hope so, because you hope so. However, I think there are stronger sides also in uh, UEFA Cup. Uh, I need to be really realistic when it comes to uh, other teams. But yeah, surely Napoli has the chance as uh, you know, the fish to, uh, to actually try and uh, uh, make it uh, really far in the competition. As well, also Juventus in Champions League. Yes, I said that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> where are your hands, Paolo? <laughs> um, hey. but, uh, this could be the, the year of uh, uh, Juventus winning Champions League and Napoli winning UEFA Cup, whatever. <laughs> Um, that would be great. Eh? Would oh, be that great would be for... awesome. That would be awesome. It would be like a super European, uh, European Super Cup uh, against uh, uh, Juventus. Yeah. We then generally you can win that one as well. Yeah, we generally win that kind of matches <laughs> against Juventus. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know, Carlos. It's tough. It's tough picture, for Napoli here. But do you, do you picture a, a Napoli AC Milan final in the Europa League? <laughs> Uh, I hope not. I hope not because it, Napoli is not going to miss. That would be really interesting, by the way. Yeah, that but would be really interesting. I, I hope not because my business partner, Matteo, is actually a senior. No, that <laughs> would be interesting for that reason. <laughs> that would be really cool for that reason. Like, for you that. will have to clash in oh, one important uh, uh, final. Uh, yeah. That I would mean, be that, would be so that would be very cool. That would be really cool. That would be. We should make a, if, if something like that happens. We're going to make a live, uh, a live yeah. TV show watching it, you yeah. guys. Please. Yes. I, I'm looking forward to that. Now I want it. <laughs> I really want. Uh, I don't play. If I would play, I could, you know, <laughs> do something to help that. But I don't know, Carlos. I don't know. I don't think Napoli would make uh, anything. Uh, no, but they, 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 as far as possible, at least. And like you say, now Europa League is getting interesting because there is uh, some really big names. Yeah. First, because in the Premier League, you have, they call it the big six, right? So it's always big teams who go to Europa League. And second, because always the teams that go down from the Champions League to the Europa League after being third in the first stage, they always give excitement. Like uh, there's some big teams like Ajax, obviously, um, well, Shakhtar that was in the group of Inter. I don't know how Inter didn't make it. That's tough. Season, but, but <laughs> yeah, much, well, much you guys lost it twice with Shakhtar, right? 
El Real Madrid lost twice. twice. El Real Madrid. Yeah. Shakhtar, Shakhtar scored five goals against Real Madrid. And Real, I don't know how Real Madrid was first in this group. But Nobody. Do not forget that uh, Luchescu is the, uh, the coach, right? Seal. He's uh, this. No? No. It's, well, he's a coach now. He was the coach for many, many years. Now yeah. he's the coach of Dinamo Kiev. Dinamo Kiev, right, right, right. Who is, who is also who is also in Europa League, by the way, Dinamo Kiev. Yeah, he was so. in our uh, in our uh, group. And was in your group. Yeah. Nice. But uh, and and what do you guys think about because this is an interesting fixture talking about Italian football, Real Madrid Atalanta in the in the next rounds. What do what do you guys think? It's not going to be easy, man. It's Atalanta, not, not yeah, be easy, Atalanta. Man. They're coming from a really uh, heavy period. Uh, there were some, uh, you know, some <laughs> situation going on today. Gomez actually talking about uh, today uh, against Roma. Gomez was not even uh, convocated. He's not going to be playing. But what's what's what's, what's the do? story? Because I was reading it's it's the Ben Gasperini. It was a big scandal. What, what's what's exactly the story behind uh, Atalanta? They probably Stop. had a fight. Uh, probably like yeah, a, there are no no not explicit details on what yeah. happens, but there, there is like this clash going on between him and uh, and Gasperini. And then Gasperini, yeah. And um, we don't have any further details, but uh, I think not even the. I mean, I mean uh, the newspapers have so much details on that. We know about some clashes, some uh, fights, Indeed. and uh, th that's the outcome and that's the consequences of this clash. Also because the Nothing, clash uh, was... Uh, sorry, Paolo. Pardon. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Also because the, the clash was actually uh, made official uh, by both sides, by Gomez and uh, Gasperini. Yeah. Gasperini in a press conference and Gomez with uh, uh, a post on social media. But they are not saying what happened. They probably had a clash. They are not getting along anymore. That's uh, pretty easy, I think. It can happen. Yeah. After so many years together, this is like the, the marriages, right? After so many years together, it's normal. To have, uh, <laughs> how, many, how many years has been Papu, Papu in, in Atalanta? Uh, I think uh, uh, many, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me... Five at least, I will say. Uh, yeah, probably even more. Just five, yeah. you think? Let's see. Uh, I'm going to tell at you. At least, at least. Let me see how Hello, is, uh, this guy. He's, uh, he joined uh, Atalanta in 2014. Uh, so actually, uh, it's not that many here. Yes. It's uh, uh, six, six years, six seasons. The, because, because before he was playing for Catania, I remember that. He was playing yeah. for Catania, then he moved to Atalanta and stayed there. And he found his uh, comfort zone, uh, his reality. Uh, not, uh, not so more comfortable now. <laughs> uh, not so, so more comfortable. But unfortunately, today football, uh, you know, nowadays football, uh, these kind of situations are... I mean, let's talk about Alejandro Gomez. He's a player that could have been uh, a winning player. He could have won some uh, trophy uh, in, a, in a bigger team. Uh, you know, in Italy, of course, uh, in the last 10 years, uh, or you play uh, for Juventus or, or Napoli, uh, basically sometimes Lazio. Uh, those are the teams that are winning. Uh, but technically, uh, to win, uh, you need to go uh, uh, somewhere else. Uh, you, you cannot stay at Al uh, Atalanta, you cannot stay in Napoli, you need to go to a bigger team, uh, Juventus, or to move to Premier League to win something else. Uh, that's no, more or less really the situation. An incredible achievement, the fact that they qualify two years in a row for the Champions League, and the mm -hmm. fact that they, they pass the group stage two years in a row. That's already... They had a their budget and, and they, but the, the transfer policy they have is incredible. The players, they they sign and the, play, the players they produce is it's it's top 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 quality honestly atalanta yeah. i don't know what kind of recruitment and team they have but it's it's amazing it's amazing they have one of the best if, uh, sorry paolo oh <laughs> you go now i was saying last year last year, <laughs> thanks last year actually if i remember correctly they were the italian team that actually reached the the farthest uh, yeah. Round in, uh, in Champions League. Yeah, wasn't that Juventus? Kicked out wasn't, earlier. Wasn't that Juventus? <laughs> Unfortunately not. Uh, the, oh. uh, what was, was the competition uh, called? <laughs> oh, that's the know. only thing that in Italy uh, we only have one way. Opa Campione. Opa Campione. <laughs> we only have one thing to tease uh, a little bit Juventus supporter, and that's Champions League because we don't have anything uh, else. As you, as you can see, as you can see, I really make it. Uh, how say? Yeah, you, so... you guys got to use, uh, you guys got to yeah. use, uh, yeah, 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 that's weird, I, let's see where, uh, just, uh, just a guess, where is uh, Alejandro Gomez going, uh, Inter, Milan? I think, I think uh, not in Italy, 
if he's going, you think he's going to go away from? Uh, I was, I, think so. I was thinking like uh, he might go. But he was, he was, he was, he was singing. He was singing the uh, the, the UN, anthem well, of the United. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but it might be a clue, but that could I don't be a think clue. It's gonna, that could be a clue. Uh, I mean, well, that could be a clue. People, important. Interesting. Yeah, but I don't, it, that was maybe more like a way to say uh, I'm fed up of being here. Like uh, my time is is gone. It's gone. Yeah, With Atlanta so, yeah. and uh, what better do way to do that than uh, seeing it like the nemesis anthem. So, I will, but I think that it's gonna go away because also like in or in some place in uh, Milan it could, it could be, but like given the the salary, given the uh, the, the role that he has on the pitch, I, I mean, in, uh, in Juventus it would be really tough to find a, a spot. I would say, also for what we said before, like with Kulusevski, uh, but also with the other team the team players that Juventus has, I see that maybe he can find uh, also for the reason you mentioned before, like for winning, for uh, uh, being part of a big, of a big project, a bigger project than Atalanta. I think he might be. I'll say packing things and go packing somewhere things. abroad. Yeah. Maybe even back to Argentina. Who knows? Who knows? No. Who knows? Yeah. Well, uh, I think. Um, why not in some somewhere in Spain? I, I don't know. It's it's funny. I, I agree with you with you guys. This this is such a top player, but I don't know why. It's it seems he's been underrated his whole career because yeah, for yeah, the national yeah. team he played very few times. Uh, he played. In, in, he never played in, like in a top top team, and uh, honestly, now maybe his age it might be a little bit, little bit too late to to go to a top team. So it's it's a pity because the guy has the skills. Honestly, it reminds me sometimes. Uh, I was going to say to Riquelme, but Riquelme also had this this unstable period where he when he was in a big team like Barcelona, he never managed, and then and then he went uh, back home to play in Argentina when he was still quite young. So I see some similarities there, but. Uh, I never understood, uh, never understood how he, he didn't play for a bigger team. And even uh, out of Italy, he's not he's not even that known or that famous, which is more shocking, you know. If you ask to no. English fans or even Spanish fans about Papu, they Gomez, some, some people they, they don't know him that much. So it's uh, I don't know. He he needs a marketing campaign or something because the guy is amazing. So we should promote uh, Gomez's uh, departure from Atalanta. <laughs> so we have. One less problem to think about <laughs> as I an think, opponent. <laughs> I think he will stay in Italy. It's likely going to uh, uh, to Milano. Uh, that's what I think. Uh, uh, and the, the only reason is because yeah. uh, I know he has like a, 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 a little but kid. Milan side, not international side. Uh, inter I think uh, I, I, I would think more like uh, AC Milan. And that would be uh, because General, uh, General Lugon is not uh, uh, renewing the contract. Uh, um, maybe that yeah. would be the, the key. Uh, uh, the reason why I think so is because, uh, you know, he has family. Uh, kids are going to school. Uh, it might be a little bit with COVID and everything for him would be uh, a little bit difficult at the moment uh, uh, but uh, I don't know but as I told you before oh, sorry. as I told you before the only the only <laughs> as a big player, the only way that he could move from Atlanta in Italy would be Milan Milan like, yeah, uh, yeah, I think so no, well, going to is, uh, is it confirmed that Chalhanoglu is not renewing the contract at Milan? That's confirmed 100%. So far so good. So far that's the rumor. That's uh, the thing. Uh, there are big players in Italy they are not uh, uh, signing a new contract. There is actually Dybala at Juventus. I think Dybala will stay at Juventus. Uh, but also Dybala at Juventus is uh, one of the contracts which is not uh, signed yet. Uh, and I think he will be free uh, agent really soon. Am I right, uh, Paolo? First of, first of January. I think so. I think Paolo yeah. Dybala will be a uh, free agent. Uh, but I think like when it comes to Dybala, these kind of players, uh, uh, the team will solve the issue. Uh, and so he will renew. Obviously with Gomez, I think the, uh, the, the situation is a little bit uh, uh, bigger. Or Gasperini goes away, uh, but I don't think it's going to happen uh, uh, this season. Uh, or Alejandro Gomez goes away. And that's easily uh, to happen. Also, because I think that Atlanta is saying doing well, even if uh, maybe not so much well, but is doing well also without uh, Gomez. Maybe uh... so. I don't see Gasperini going away. Like it would be like interrupting a project uh, all of a sudden uh, with the yeah, Champions yeah. League behind the corner would be really painful. But you know, more likely. I'm... 
I believe in domino effect, uh, you know, Paolo, because uh, uh, Gomez is really attached with uh, uh, the Colombian players, with Muriel, with Zapata. They get really uh, uh, along to each other. And I was, re- I was listening to this podcast about uh, the situation in, uh, uh, among Atalanta, and it seems like uh, there is like a, a, um, really a block of players uh, that don't get along anymore with Gasperini. It's not just Gomez. Uh, Gomez is the captain. Uh, he got the, yeah. the big one. But the, uh, the big he's situation. the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, so uh, he might be that uh, we will see a revolution uh, in uh, in the squad uh, of Atalanta, which is actually uh, physiological. It would be understandable. Atalanta is uh, growing and growing and growing, and maybe they need uh, to keep growing a, a new player, uh, fresh air, you know, sure, um, sure. Uh, something in that direction. Uh, guys, we are basically running out of time. Uh, I will ask a really uh, small question. I, I just want to uh, ask a, a guess uh, about one result, which is not going to be Napoli. Don't even try to do so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to stop the recording. No, supersti- right no superstitious. At no, all. I at don't all. believe in bad luck <laughs> and good luck. And no. Uh, no broken uh, mirrors, nothing. Like <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, because I really care about my business partner, uh, Matteo, I will ask. To Paolo, what's the result, the score about uh, uh, Sassuolo, IC Milan, and then to Carlos, I will ask uh, Atalanta Roma. So we leave uh, Inter out. Sassuolo, IC Milan, I think it's going to be a draw. A draw. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, cannot uh, imagine uh, the, the score itself, like uh, maybe 1 1 or uh, even more. Okay. 2 2. But uh, I will just say a draw. A draw. Yeah. What do you think, Carlos, about Atalanta Roma? For me, Atalanta Roma, now that we are uh, talking all this history of Atalanta, I would say one, two for Spanish Roma. We call it Spanish Roma with Pedro, with Borja with Mayoral, with Carlos, with uh, so many Spanish yeah. players there, and the, the goalkeeper, of course. So I think one, two. And, and Roma has this up and down, but I, I, when they play good, they play really good. I, it's a team I like to watch. But uh, It's a nice team, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a nice thing to watch when they play against Napoli, especially, and they lose uh, 4-0. That's yeah. beautiful to watch. I'm, li- I'm looking at the live results now. Torino 0, Bologna 0, mm-hmm. 20 minutes. What the hell is going on with Torino, guys? It's oof, scary. We, we talked about that. We talked about that. We like, talked about uh, that a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, when there was the derby with the Juventus. Like so, they, apart from being unlucky, but the, maybe the, the coach is not doing it. Uh, yeah, I think well. it's uh, a coach problem. And uh, let me tell you this. Uh, Napoli will face Torino next week. Uh, actually, Wednesday, uh, because there is like a, a midweek uh, uh, match. I don't know. I have like feeling, you know, that uh, that team that w- suddenly wakes up, you know? <laughs> That's the feeling I have. It always happens like that. It always happens like that. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, they are really uh, Torino. I don't know what's happening with uh, with Torino. I don't know what's happening with uh, Fiorentina. Yesterday, I watched Fiorentina, Elas Verona. Uh, I, while uh, I like uh, the way Elas Verona is playing, which is doing uh, crazy, wonderful stuff. Uh, also, Fiorentina, dude, they have like amazing players, uh, but uh, there is not uh, chemistry, uh, chemistry between the players. Uh, something is, yeah. you know, they're all uh, far away from each other. Uh, there is no ideas on on the pitch. They don't know what to do. So, no, uh, three is the same. There's something missing. That it, there's something that can glue each other missing. That miss the, completely. Uh, yeah, yeah, those are teams that have to be in the Serie A. I mean, Torino and Fiorentina, it's difficult to see Serie A without... It's what happened last year in, in the Spanish league when Espanyol from Barcelona went down to the second division after so many years. It's it's weird. It's a team that you always connect to the to the, to the, the, the first division, you know. So yeah. Well, yeah. this year one big team is gonna not make it because we have like at the moment uh, Fiorentina, Genoa, and Torino, uh, and then yeah. Crotone. That's uh, uh, you know the bottom of uh, the fight for the relegation so far. That's astonishing. Uh, super surprising oh, wow, uh, yes. against all the possible predictions at the beginning of the year. Indeed, indeed. Okay, guys. Uh, uh, it was a fantastic. I had a lot of laugh. Forza Napoli. <laughs> you can say Forza <laughs> you if you want. <laughs> we always say Forza Napoli. It's implied. It's implied. It's implied. Uh, uh, Carlos, yeah. thanks for joining. Uh, anytime. Uh, Thank you, Carlos. Uh, Grazie. Grazie anytime. Uh, next time, we will make sure to wear some uh, Spanish jersey. Uh, <laughs> maybe Barcelona one, so you will be happy. And uh, that's the only that's the only jersey. Uh, there are three jerseys: uh, Napoli, 
Barcelona, Boca, and Argentino Juniors. Those are the only jerseys that we would be able to wear. And that's Ooh, because of Maradona. I, I understand why. The next one, because I have a virtual background, I have all my people's jerseys behind. So I can show my Italian jerseys in the next, next in the podcast. Next. I, don't wanna I, I don't even know what I have. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but a few. <laughs> Guys, uh, thank okay. you very much. So Merry Christmas as well. Merry Christmas to everyone. Yes, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Uh, happy Merry holidays. Christmas. Uh, and uh, yeah, next podcast is probably going to be uh, next Sunday. Uh, it's going to be next Sunday, the next podcast. Uh, and so guys, uh, if you like what you're seeing and what you're hearing, uh, follow us, uh, like us, uh, and uh, to next week. Thank you, everyone. Ciao. Ciao. Bye-bye. <laughs>